ABC's 2020 recently put out a special about the Stacey Stites murder, aka the Rodney Reed case. Now this case has gained national attention because huge celebrities and giant organizations believe Rodney Reed was actually wrongfully convicted in 1996 for the murder of one Stacey Stites and that he is in fact an innocent man on death row. The campaign has been pushed very heavily by one Kim Kardashian, who I always go to, by the way, for my judicial advice on who's guilty and who's innocent, and The Innocence Project. The Innocence Project, of course, being the organization that was founded by one of O.J. Simpson's defense attorneys, which, by the way, that fact on its own should explain why The Innocence Project isn't really what it seems, and it also explains the Kim Kardashian connection, because Robert Kardashian, Kim Kardashian's father, was also on the same team of lawyers called the Dream Team that got a guilty O.J. Simpson off on murder charges, also in the 90s. Now before I get into this ABC 2020 special on the Stacey Sites case, I want to make one thing abundantly clear. This special is incredibly biased in favor of Rodney Reed. It's not as bad as some of the other media put out about the case in that they actually take the time to get the family side of the story and talk to the prosecutors and the people who actually put the case together against Reed, but you can clearly see the tilt of the filmmakers behind this special and the fact that they're trying to lead you to believe that Rodney Reed is innocent. One of the things that I noticed because I'm familiar with the case and I've gone over this multiple times for you guys here on this channel is they actually left out key additional evidence that was found on appeal, which I will talk about later. But first, I want to get into the theory put forward by the people who say Rodney Reed is innocent, which is that Jimmy Fennell, Stacey Stites' fiancé, is the one who in fact killed Stacey Stites, and Rodney Reed is somehow being framed for this case. But first, every video I've ever done about the Rodney Reed case has been demonetized by YouTube, and this is incredibly obnoxious, especially since I see celebrities and true crime podcasts making money spreading lies about the Rodney Reed and Stacey Stites case. So thank you so much to my patrons and those who support this channel for making these videos possible because despite the fact that YouTube demonetizes and suppresses content like this, it is you guys that actually allow me to make content like this and I appreciate you guys for that. Now one of the things people like to use against Jimmy Fennell, even though it has nothing to do with the Rodney Reed Stacey Stites murder, is that years after the murder, after all of this was resolved and it was proven in court that Rodney Reed was guilty, Jimmy Fennell, who was a police officer during the time that Stacey Stites was murdered and was still a police officer until this point, actually was convicted of sexually assaulting a woman that he came into contact with while working as a police officer. Now, Fennell did this. He was convicted of this, and he is in no way, shape, or form a good guy. Obviously, when you do something like this, when you abuse your power in this way, you're a terrible person. He served 10 years in prison for this, and now he's out, but there's no excuse for what he did. However, this doesn't have anything to do with the Stacey Stites case. I think the confusion about this comes in because Rodney Reed was convicted of raping and murdering Stacey Stites, and Jimmy Fennell, as a police officer, about a decade later, committed a rape. Therefore, people think that there's some kind of connection in how these crimes were committed. But again, Jimmy Fennell was Stacey Stites' fiancé, and it wasn't his semen found inside of Stacey Stites at the time that she died. It was Rodney Reed's semen. So the only connection makes no sense, because if it wasn't Rodney Reed, then there was no rape. However, this is something that people often use, despite the fact that, again, it doesn't align with anything. But the reason why Jimmy Fennell is innocent is because Jimmy Fennell could not have possibly committed this crime. According to the defense, Jimmy Fennell must have murdered Stacey Stites in his apartment and brought her body down in the car and then dumped the body and dumped the car near a school which is in the town where she worked, but not in the town where she lived. And as laid out in the documentary, Jimmy Fennell would have had to travel about 30 miles in a matter of about an hour or so, which was impossible for him to do without a vehicle, without a cab, without a bus ticket, or some way of actually transporting himself there. Because of the logistic problems, Jimmy's truck was found in Bastrop, and he was home in Giddings, which is some 30 miles away. And so that was the problem, is that law enforcement could never make it make any sense that Jimmy had any involvement in this because they couldn't figure out how he ever could have gotten back home. And since Rodney Reed didn't come up as a suspect until about 11 months after the murder, Jimmy Fennell, the fiance of the girl that turned up dead, was the prime suspect. And all of these possibilities were thoroughly investigated and vetted, and it was discovered that there was no possible way 
from when they pinged the car at arriving at the school that Jimmy Fennel could have got himself back home in time for Stacy Sites' mother, who lived in the apartment below him, to wake him up to tell him that Stacy Sites was missing. The investigators, the Texas Rangers, explored the possibility that somehow maybe someone had helped him and they could never find anything or anybody that credibly could have helped him. They looked at the mileage on the different patrol vehicles there at Giddings PD where he worked to see if there was any of those that were off, and there weren't. They looked at whether there were bus fares for, for people that night, and there weren't any. They looked at cab fares to see if there was some way he could have taken a cab. Now, even if you believe that Jimmy Fennell had some other way of transportation that the police never found out about, out, you have to remember what I just said, that Stacy Sites' mother lived in the apartment below Jimmy Fennel and Stacy Sites, meaning that Jimmy Fennel, in order to have killed his fiance in his own apartment, would have had to carry the body down these stairs without waking up Stacy's mother, Stacy's mother, who often stayed up late in order to hear Stacy Stites leaving for work in order to make her 3.30 shift at HEB Supermarket. Now, while the school parking lot where the car was abandoned was 30 miles away and in a different town from where Jimmy Fennell lived, and there was no possible way for Jimmy Fennell to make his way home in time to be woken up by Stacy Sites' mother, thus excluding him as a suspect in the crime, Rodney Reed lived just six tenths of a mile away from where the car was abandoned, and it was near these train tracks where Rodney Reed was often seen just hanging around. Now, this is where a lot of people start losing touch with reality. They start making the case that Jimmy Fennell and the Bastrop Police Department must have framed Rodney Reed for this crime. But here's the problem with that. First of all, Jimmy Fennell did not work for the Bastrop Police Department. Jimmy Fennell and Stacey Stites lived in another town that had a different police department. So essentially, you have to have participants from two different police departments doing the framing of Rodney Reed. Also, the investigation was taken over by the Texas Rangers. So that is a third state-level department that must have been involved in the framing. And the fourth problem with this is that Jimmy Fennell never pointed the finger at Rodney Reed, not once. If Jimmy Fennell had planted the car to frame Rodney Reed as revenge for Rodney Reed having a consensual relationship with Stacey Stites the way that Rodney Reed claims, then wouldn't a key part of actually framing Rodney Reed would be pointing the finger at Rodney Reed. Remember, Reed was not arrested for this crime until about 11 months after. So if it's a frame-up job, then it's not a very good one. Also, logically, this doesn't really track because how would Jimmy Fennell know that Rodney Reed's semen would be the key evidence inside Stacey Stites at the time that he killed her? Jimmy Fennell would have had to have had knowledge that no human person could have possibly had at the time of this supposed framing of Rodney Reed, which wasn't very good because, again, Reed wasn't arrested for the crime until 11 months later, all of those 11 months which Jimmy Fennell was the prime suspect. So the only other option for people who believe that Jimmy Fennell planted the car there would be that he planted it there six tenths of a mile away from Roddy Reed's home by coincidence, which again, I don't know how much coincidence you actually believe in. But again, even if you're the biggest believer in coincidence there possibly is, you have to admit this would be stretching it. Coincidentally leaving the car six tenths of a mile away from the guy that your wife happens to be having an affair with. Now, while the evidence doesn't fit Jimmy Fennell at all, the evidence couldn't be more clear in the fact that it points to Rodney Reed as the perpetrator of both the rape and the murder. First of all, Reed, as I said, denied knowing Stacey Stites until it was revealed that his DNA was inside her. And you know that I'm one of the investigators on the uh, Stacey Stites murder. You're one of the many, many people that we have, have talked to regarding this case. Talking about you was really nothing unusual. What I want to know from you is if you know this girl, and if you do, when did you meet her? Have you ever met her? Or do you even know who she is? No, I do not. I don't know what Stacey said. I've seen that, that, that stuff on the news and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't know that person. Never dated her? No, I haven't. What I would like to get from you, if, if you don't mind, is a written statement stating that I don't know the Stacey Stein. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't. And then he decided to go with, well, she was my secret girlfriend. So secret that no witness was produced at trial that could corroborate the affair. But according to Reed, this is perfectly explainable because Stacy Stites, on her way to her 3 o'clock in the morning shift at HEB Supermarket, 
would stop by, pick up Rodney Reed so they could just hook up in the car and then drop him off and then go to work. Yes, you heard me right. This 19 year old girl, according to Rodney Reed, was meeting up with him after midnight in order to hook up in the car for a longer period of time than Stacy actually knew her fiance, Jimmy Fennell. Now, because according to Reed, their relationship consisted only of these late night meetings, this is why Rodney Reed didn't actually know a lot of information about Stacy Stites as a person. He couldn't describe anything that wasn't publicly available in the media about her. And this is why nobody really saw what was going on because again, it was 1996 and everybody's really racist about interracial dating in Bastrop, Texas at the time. But Stacy was risking it all in order to see Rodney Reed for these late night rendezvous, even though there wasn't a serious relationship at all and it was purely sexual according to Rodney Reed. Now, if that explanation wasn't terrible and embarrassingly stupid enough, I forgot to mention how Rodney Reed Reed became the prime suspect in the Stacey Sites murder case. And that was because he attempted to attack and assault another woman who looked remarkably similar to Stacey Sites, about the same age, the same color hair, and he met her in the same area that Stacey Sites was driving through in order to get to work. But this woman escaped and she was able to identify Rodney Reed as her attacker. But the hits just keep on coming for Rodney Reed because after he was arrested for this attempted rape of a woman who again matched the profile of Stacey Stites just six months after Stacey Stites was killed in the same area where Stacey Stites is suspected to have gone missing, the police decided to compare his DNA to the DNA that was found inside and on Stacey Stites' body and it was a match. But it wasn't just a match for Stacey Stites, it was also a match for a woman who was raped six months earlier along those same train tracks that Rodney Reed was known to have frequented. So we have three victims that fit the same profile around the same area that were attacked by Rodney Reed, but it's actually worse than that because Reed's DNA consistently matched other victims who alleged sexual assault against Rodney Reed. Among these allegers that had DNA inside them that matched Rodney Reed was a 12 year old girl. Now this is the part where 2020, Kim Kardashian, The Innocence Project, and all these people say, well, Rodney Reed was never convicted of those crimes. Sure, his DNA was found inside these victims, including inside a 12 year old girl, but he was never convicted of those crimes. And let me make this clear, that's 100% true. However, the reason why Rodney Reed was never convicted of those crimes is because he was being put on trial in the Stacey Stites case for capital murder. So they decided to go with the capital murder charges first because if he was convicted and sentenced to death, they wouldn't have to go through the process of doing the trials for all those other cases. Even if Rodney Reed were to somehow, with the help of Kim Kardashian and the Innocence Project, beat the capital murder charges, he would easily be convicted overnight for these other crimes in which his DNA matches what was found inside the victims. Now the Innocence Project will tell you that this case is really flimsy as it only hinges on the DNA evidence, the semen that was found inside Stacey Stites. However, that's not the case. At trial, they actually swabbed Stacey Stites' chest and they found Rodney Reed's saliva on Stacey Stites' chest. And while DNA can live inside you, for a long period of time. The idea that Stacey Stites didn't shower, didn't wash her chest in between when Rodney Reed says they had a consensual encounter, which was about a day prior to her murder, and when she was actually murdered makes no sense. So obviously Rodney Reed was in the car with Stacey Stites because Rodney Reed was murdering her. However, that hasn't stopped the Innocence Project from just ignoring that saliva evidence exists and for petitioning the court for more DNA testing on more stuff. And honestly, if I'm so confident in Rodney Reed's guilt, shouldn't I be in favor of the Innocence Project getting the DNA results on all this additional stuff that they say was never tested, which is unfair because I mean, come on, technology has advanced in a lot of ways since 1996. They should test this DNA. But the thing is, they did. You see, in 2014, in one of Rodney Reed's numerous appeals, they filed a motion to get an independent person to analyze which pieces of evidence could be subjected to more rigorous DNA testing that actually exists in that year that didn't exist at the time that Rodney Reed was convicted of the murder. And the DNA expert actually did find and identify two different things that should be tested in order to get better, more accurate results. And I'm talking about Stacey Stites' pants 
and her back brace. And what they ended up discovering was that Rodney Reed's touch DNA was a match for the pants and for the back brace. In fact, Reed's DNA was actually mixed with that of Stacey Stites on the back brace, meaning that both of them touched it around the same time and not present on the back brace or the pants was Jimmy Fennell's DNA, which is really interesting because touch DNA was not a thing back in 1996. So how could Jimmy Fennell, the person who supposedly framed Rodney Reed, have planted it, much less removed his own DNA from it, when he had no way of knowing that in the future we would be able to test things for DNA in this manner? The answer is Fennell couldn't have known he couldn't have planted this because Rodney Reed is guilty. As the judge in the appeal says, there is more evidence tying Rodney Reed to this crime scene than there was at the time that he was convicted. Now, before I close out this video, there's one thing I definitely need to address because somebody's gonna bring up that there was somebody who says now that she remembers having a conversation with Stacey Stites that can totally confirm that the affair was going on between Stacey Stites and Rodney Reed at the time. And this person is 100% not credible at all whatsoever. She said she really wasn't so excited to get married and quickly followed that with saying that she was actually sleeping with a black guy named Rodney and that she was, you know, not sure what her fiance would do if he found out and she had to be pretty careful about it. She claims she worked with Stacey Stites at HEB and at one point she had a conversation with Stacey Stites where she confirmed that she was sleeping around cheating on her fiance with a black man named Rodney. Now, it's interesting that she says this over a decade later because at the time of Stacey Stites' murder, HEB actually offered a $50,000 reward for anybody who had any information that could lead to an arrest. And this woman, for some reason, all the way back in 1996, felt that this information wasn't pertinent. It was only after Rodney Reed's case had been in the news and got all this media attention that she decided that she had to come forward because in my opinion, this is a woman who sees cases on TV and tries to involve themselves into it. And the biggest red flag of this woman's testimony is in fact her own testimony because the way she describes the conversation is a way that humans have never spoken to each other absolutely ever at any point ever. There was one instance where we were having lunch in the break room together and it was just the two of us and um, she pretty much was confiding in me. We were talking about her, her engagement ring and I was like, oh, are you so excited to get married? And she said she really wasn't so excited to get married and quickly followed that with saying that she was actually sleeping with a black guy named Rodney and that she was you know, not sure what her fiance would do if he found out and she had to be pretty careful about it. So she wasn't really excited about getting married because she was sleeping with a black dude named Rodney, she said. So she walked up to her friend, looked at her engagement ring, and then decided to ask her if she was excited about her wedding. Now, first and foremost, anybody who knows anything about Stacey Stites knows that she took the job at HEB in order to pay off her wedding. She was trying to get more money for that purpose. So her friend would have known already that she was engaged, so it would be weird for her to unprompted, based on noticing the ring, to ask her about her engagement and how excited she is about the wedding. But on top of that, Stacy's response is again delivered in a way that no person has ever responded. She says, no, I'm not excited about my wedding, and I know I'm paraphrasing, but relax, because I'm having an affair with a black man named Rodney. Who tells another girl, a high school girl, they're having an affair in this manner? How does that make any sense? At the time, I didn't speak up because I did know I had something to lose. I had my whole family still in Bastrop. I didn't want to, you know, have anything happen to them because... I'm implicating a cop from the next, you know, town over. So, you know, I, I had big regret that I didn't come out in the beginning and say anything. And then I just didn't realize that what I had to say meant so much in this case. Because if that's what it came down to, yeah, they were having an affair. She told me. I thought more people knew about it as well. So, you know, it's, I 100% remember everything about that conversation. And she, she was scared in a way. And then she was also super happy because she's, sleeping with this guy named Rodney, you know, and I didn't know who Rodney was, didn't know who Jenny was. So, you know, I have zero <laughs> affiliation to either one of them. I'm not a family member. I don't, all I knew was Stacy from work. And all I know is what she told me 
and that's all I can, you know, I stand by my word with that. Seriously, really think about this conversation. This conversation that this woman swears definitely happened, despite the fact that it is no way connected to reality. Don't you think it's a little bit odd that every single bit of information that was out in the public, that was in speculation, remember there's a huge story in this small town, is included in this one soundbite from Stacey Stites delivered by this woman who decided to tell this story over a decade later. So I just realized when I heard that it was still happening and that he was actually had an execution date set, I felt like it's now or never, I need to say something because if that was the only thing that convicted him, and I had no idea about any of the other stuff, you know, if just that was a reason why he was convicted, then that's not true, you know, and I, I needed to say something because Stacy physically sat there and told me she was sleeping with him. I never saw them together, I never saw him, but I knew what she told me, so I knew it, it had some implication in the case. This conversation hits all of the key points needed by the defense in order to provide them exactly what they've been searching for for over a decade in order to try to defend Rodney, which is why I in no way, shape, or form believe that this conversation happened and was only brought up publicly decades later. I just wanted to help in whatever way I can, so that still stands, you know, if I needed to come in and be a credible witness that had nothing to do with any of them, and I just happened to work with Stacy and just happened to talk to her in the break room, you know, that's, and then I just didn't realize that what I had to say meant so much in this case, because if that's what it came down to, yeah, they were having an affair. She told me. I thought more people knew about it as well. I even find her body language incredibly troubling throughout her interviews, but on top of that, the thing that's the biggest red flag to me that this might be somebody with issues that's coming out and trying to make herself be a more important player in this giant news item is the way that she talks about how she could actually save Rodney Reed's life and how she didn't think that she was that important, but it just turns out, since nobody's willing to come forward, that she's some kind of a hero. These are giant red flags that people look for in law enforcement when people are trying to involve themselves in high-profile cases, but since Rodney Reed's defense team is trying to throw anything at the wall to see what sticks, they're completely ignoring this and putting this woman out there as if she's credible when she's not. Look, the only reasonable conclusion one can come to when you actually examine the evidence of the Stacey Stites murder is that Rodney Reed is guilty. He did it. He raped and murdered Stacey Stites, and it's undeniable. You can trot out as many fame-seeking people as you want to talk about conversations that no human have ever had about their relationships and affairs. 15 years later, even though they could have done so for the cash prize of $50,000 at the time that they definitely knew about because their employer was offering it at the time, you can bring Kim Kardashian and all of her celebrity nonsense and how she believes Rodney Reed and how Rodney Reed was framed. You can bring the Innocence Project up. You can bring up all these hack fraud true crime podcasts, but none of that supersedes the facts of the case. For Rodney Reed to have been framed, Jimmy Fennell's police department, the Bastrop police department, and the Texas Rangers would have had to have been in on it, along with a special prosecutor who was brought in to prosecute this high profile case. It would have required Jimmy Fennell to teleport himself 30 miles in a time period that he could not have made it, and there has never been any evidence discovered on how he made his way home. It would have required Jimmy Fennell to sneak Stacy Stites body down these stairs past her mother's apartment without her noticing. And on top of that, it would have required Jimmy Fennell to have been able to plant evidence in the year 1996 that he could not have possibly known about the existence of because the technology in order to test these types of DNA evidence wouldn't become available until decades later. Reed's story is just not possible, and while I could keep hammering this home with details and beating down conspiracies, I want to go in a different direction because Stacey Stites' mother, the woman who refused chemotherapy for her cancer while she was pregnant with Stites in order to bring her into the world, has some thoughts on all of these conspiracy theories about Rodney Reed's innocence. found out that I was uh, pregnant with Stacy, and I had cancer at the same time. And so I put off any drugs or any chemicals to keep that child alive until I had her because that soul was more precious to me than mine. I look at that woman and I hear her talk and I realize that what I'm looking at and what I'm hearing is purpose. That woman is sticking around on this earth to see Rodney Reed 
face justice for what he did to her youngest daughter. And she's not going to check out until Rodney Reed pays for his crime. And if I was Rodney Reed, I would be really scared. Anyway, those are my thoughts about the 2020 special and the Rodney Reed case. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, you can show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media platforms. You can support me via the support links. This has been me talking about the Stacey Stites Rodney Reed case. Till next time.